running for New York State Attorney General on the Green Party line because after 40 years as a practicing lawyer, having litigated literally hundreds and hundreds of cases in the federal courts, handled more than 400 appeals in our United States District Courts and Court of Appeals, I've concluded that both parties in New York State share a history as well as a current status as patrons of corruption. It's very simple. I'm not a supporter of Mr. Cuomo. I had the chance to run for county executive this year in my county as a Democrat, 2017. I rejected and repudiated the opportunity, and I did so because I did not want to run in the same party as Mr. Cuomo. Mr. Cuomo has led a fracking infrastructure which threatens the health and safety of our residents, threatens the health, health and safety of New York City water supply. Mr. Cuomo has been uh, an avid proponent of political corruption. And as long as we continue to have political corruption in our state at the level we do, uh, we have no possibility of teaching our children well. I have seven children. They range in age from 18 to 30. They've grown up in a community where the Republican Party in our county has a pay-to-play culture. If you want to get anywhere in our county, pay the Republican Party off. New York State has the same exact culture. It's time for a change. I am sick and tired of federal prosecutors prosecuting our elected officials. We have state sovereignty. If we have corruption in our state, it's our responsibility through the Attorney General's office to prosecute those corrupt elected officials. Now, there are four Democrats running in a primary that will be held on September 13th. One of them will emerge as the Democratic candidate. The Republican candidate is an unknown who has no experience in public law. I've been practicing public law for 40 years, both with the Justice Department, with the NAACP all around the United States, including in the land, landmark Yonkers litigation where I was lead counsel for 26 years. Let me say simply this to you, and you can check it out on your computers. Whichever Democrat is the nominee, and I think I know who will be the nominee, not one of them, man or woman, has ever brought a case in federal court. That includes Zephyr, it includes Tish, it includes Patrick Maloney, it includes, includes Miss Eve from Buffalo. They want to litigate against Donald Trump, do they? Frankly, they wouldn't know how to file a federal complaint, which is where you have to sue Mr. Trump. Unfortunately, many of them are right now engaged in the same corrupt practices which they condemn, taking large amounts of money from real estate interests. I've taken not one corporate penny of corporate money, nor will I ever. I've taken not one penny from any LLC, which is a loophole provided in New York State law to allow for major contributions by large entities. Now, the Republican Party, and I know we have a Republican here, and I don't mean to disrespect you so personal, has been equally responsible for this duopoly of corruption in our state, whether it's Dean Skelos, or before him, George Pataki, who literally sold Court of Claims seats to the highest bidder. There is a history of despicable, reprehensible corruption in the state, and someone who is independent, independent entirely, of these power brokers has to do something about it. I have a long history as a civil rights lawyer. I've spent my whole career as a civil rights lawyer. And I'll tell you this. When I'm state attorney general, we are not going to be defending state agencies which engage in systematic bigotry against our minority citizens. Let me explain to you. In 2002, the New York State Civil Service Commission adopted the, quote, battery test. The battery test was a test given to everyone in the state who wanted the promotion from their current civil service rank. It was an unvalidated test. That means it had absolutely no relationship to the position's promotion. However, if you didn't take it and score a high score, you were eliminated from any opportunity for promotion. I represented 4,700 African American and Hispanics in New York State. We not only stopped the test, and it's no longer given, but I got $45 million for that group of individuals because they were being systematically discriminated by a test which everyone in the state knew had no validity. When I'm Attorney General, 
The first day someone files a lawsuit against that test, I'll do an inquiry of the New York State Commission on Civil Service, and I'll say, where is your validation study? What is the racially disparate impact of this test? And when the answers come back, we don't have a validity study, and here's the racially disparate impact, the test is going to go in the garbage, and no one's going to have to sue me about it. I hope it's very clear to you. I'm not interested in defending racist and sexist state agencies. I brought too many cases against the state of New York, whether it's with respect to the prisons, our transportation department, which has a very hard time employing racial minorities anywhere except in New York City. Whichever agency it is, Department of Correctional Services, with brutality cases, a legion in the state, we need an attorney general who has enough knowledge of the system because he or she has actually litigated the cases, as only I have, which will clean this up. In our names, enough. Enough. Now, the problems in New York City are, frankly, almost beyond description. The dysfunction of the transit system, a school system which produces on proficiency test scores, which is so abysmal as to really, frankly, be disgusting in a civilized society. Those problems of pandemic in our state. In Rochester, New York, grades three through eight, five percent of the children are proficient in reading and math. In Albany, nine percent. In Buffalo, 11 percent. In Syracuse, 12 percent. In New York City, about 13%. So we have elected officials of both political parties who preside over a class, a political class, with, from my perspective, no concern whatsoever for what's going on in the streets. None. Okay? I'm not interested in a lot of talking about what you will do. I'm interested in a record. My record of 40 years is... I've been in federal courts, litigated more cases than all of the other candidates put together by many times. You have 670 lawyers under your control when you're the New York State Attorney General. Those lawyers should be deployed to end corruption in our state, to end environmental degradation in our state, and to stand for the health and welfare of people. Not to defend corrupt state agencies, racist and sexist state agencies, and state agencies which engage in practices which are indefensible. Right now, the Attorney General's office has a policy. The federal courts say mediate early in cases. The Attorney General's office says we'll never mediate. In the city of Yonkers, where I was the NAACP lawyer from 1982 through 2007, I eventually got $300 million from the state of New York to remake the Yonkers schools. I brought the case against the state in 1988. Mr. Pataki, not Mr. Cuomo, made an agreement to settle the case in 2002. The $300 million was expended in the next five years to remake the Yonkers School District. I got $100 million from the state and federal governments to rebuild housing and pre present integrated housing opportunities for long segregated minority groups in the city. Other people can talk in this race about what they want to do. I can tell you what I've done. I've stopped the major landfill in my county, which was polluting our county in, a, in an arid, disgusting way. People can talk about wanting to protect the environment. I've been the one representing the citizen groups against the fracking infrastructure throughout the Hudson Valley and beyond. So it's very simple. I view this as a race about individuals. Someone is going to emerge as a Democratic Party candidate. That individual is going to claim a great many accomplishments. I've studied all those candidates. Sean Patrick Maloney has been in Congress for six years. He represents my district. He has done practically nothing. That's the truth. He can't point to any significant legislative accomplishments. He can't point to any significant advocacy on issues of his day. It's been a very trying time these years for our country. He's been somewhere lurking in the background. So my belief is very simple. You're going to have a choice this November because I'm going to give you a choice. And that choice, for me, has nothing to do with party. The Green Party is a party of the future in New York State, in my view, because I go to fairs all around the state. And what I hear are people are sick of both major political parties, with all due respect to your club. 
people recognize that both political parties have let them down and that both political parties are run by a small cast of characters whose primary interest is their own self-perpetuation. I'm too old to have any political ambition, none whatsoever. Attorney General is a stepping stone for all of these candidates. Each and every one of them wants to be governor. I understand that. That's been the progression in our state. Fine. But when you have that ambition, it distorts your ability to do the job. How are you going to fight corruption if the people you need to fight are the people in your party and you need their support to become governor? It doesn't happen. And that's why it hasn't happened. It's very simple. I'm a totally independent person. I've run my own law firm since the Yonkers uh, victory in November of 85 for 32 years. I owe nothing to anyone. And that makes me very dangerous to the power structure in the state. Because I know where the bodies are buried. I've litigated the cases. I've seen what these individuals do to step on other people. And, uh, you know, here we are. So thank you for your few minutes and consideration. It's good to be with you. And when you have an opportunity to vote, because I am on the ballot in November, you're not going to have to go searching. I own the Green Party line. You'll be able to vote for Michael Sussman. Send a message to those in power. The political class time is up. Thank you. Thank you.